A good early season fly on our waters is the Kites Imperial. It was created by a chap called Oliver Kite. He was a, a major in the British Army and he uh, he saw service in the Second World War in the Far East and then came back to this country and, and retired. Um, he was a member of the Services Dry Fly Fishing Association <laughs> which is a, a club for officers and they had some water on the a chalk stream in uh, Wiltshire, a chalk stream called the River Avon. Um, another very famous chap, Frank Sawyer, was the, the River Bailiff. Uh, he was a generation older than Oliver Kite, but they knew one another uh, very well. In fact, they lived opposite one another, uh, I think in a place called Neverhaven. Neverhaven. Um, Frank Sayer pioneered nymph fishing, which had never been very, very popular, but then dry fry was the, was the way to go. Uh, nymph fishing was rather frowned upon. But Oliver Kite popularised nymph fishing, and uh, in his book about nymph fishing, he uh, credited Frank Sayer. Um, unfortunately, they fell out. And for the last five years of their Oliver Kite's life, I don't think they spoke to one another, uh, which was a bit unfortunate. Frank Sawyer was very much the working man. I mean, there are some videos of him tying a fly. You can tell by his hands that uh, he's, a, he's a man of the land, as it were. And I suspect that there will have been very much the the officers <laughs> and their employees will have been regarded as other ranks and should know their place. <clears throat> and uh, reading uh, about uh, Frank Sawyer, um, there were instances where he was he was put in his place by the officers, and I'm sure he didn't take very kindly to it. Uh, now Oliver Kite was a major, or had been a major. He had a very imposing handlebar moustache and smoked a pipe. Uh, and I think he was a bit of a stickler. He, uh, he was employed by Southern Television to make videos about fishing and wildlife, and, and they're very, very good. And as a fisherman, he forego all the sort of modern materials and, and stuck with a, a big heavy <laughs> glass fibre rod um, and, and when you watch him fishing um, there didn't seem to be too much finesse about it but nevertheless he, he, he caught fish and that's the name of the game unfortunately he had a, a heart problem he'd had a heart attack in his 30s and uh, later he uh, in 1968 when he was only 48 he, uh, he dropped dead on the banks of the River Test in Hampshire. Frank Sawyer continued until he was 74, but again he died on the banks of the River Avon in uh, 1980. But they were very famous in their way for the flies that they, they created. So this is a Kites Imperial and uh, it was called Imperial, uh, in fact it, it was called Kites Imperial by another fella, not by Oliver Kite himself because of its purple silk and its, uh, its gold rimming, purple and gold being sort of imperial colours if you like. It represents a large dark olive. Um, and fishes very well in largest sizes on chalk streams in the south of England. Up here it has to be tied a little bit smaller. It's very popular on the rivers that flow off the Pennines on the west side, the Ribble 
alone and the Eden. Um, on the east side, on the Swirl and the Ewer and the Wharf, we tend not to get large dark olives. Nevertheless, it represents something, <laughs> whatever that may be. It's a very good early season fly and uh, it catches many, many trout. And I'll, I'll demonstrate how I tie it now. <coughs> so these are the materials you need for Kate's Imperial. There's some purple silk, some fine gold wire, <laughs> the hackle. I've got two here. The lighter one, which is slightly almost a gold colour, I suspect would do well on southern rivers. On northern rivers I prefer this, this slightly darker, more honey done uh, hackle. So that's the one I'll be using. And the other thing you need is heron hell. This is part of the primary feather from a heron. Unfortunately, you cannot, well, fortunately, you can't buy this stuff. I mean, <coughs> this is from a heron I found dead on the riverbank with a broken leg. Um, it had a, a ring on, which I sent away to the address given. And Oh, weeks later, when I'd forgotten all about it, I got a letter back telling me where this bird had been r ringed, and it's um, and the date it was ringed. Uh, it was ringed in a heronry in Lincolnshire, uh, two years before I found it, which was quite interesting. So I'm going to use a, a size 14 Captain Hamilton, Partridge Captain Hamilton hook, which I, I tend to use most of the time anyway. So just wax the silk with a bit of beeswax. And just bring it catch it in at the head and then just bring it down in close touching turns Well, yeah, the thread lies just between the, the barb and the point. Normally when you tie in flies you don't have this protruding out, it's normally hidden by the jaws. Because when you tie in you catch the thread on it and it, it um, either snaps it or frays it. So I'll just push that point back in. So it's not visible. And for the tail, I need some quite long fibres, so I just take one of these longer hackles off this Indian cape. It's quite a good quality Indian cape as they, as they go. And I just pull the fibres back on here. so that the, the tips are level and I just want a decent bunch of them, probably I don't know and just snip them off About the same length as the body, maybe just a little bit longer. Just turn them in on top of the hook, just pinch and loop. So they don't look 
October. I need to tie in some gold wire. I've cut gold wire with scissors. It just blunts the blowing things. So I just spin it round. So I just rest it on the on the thread and just bring it up under the hook shank. And just tie in the turn like so. And just trim those off. Now I need some heron hurl. Just need about that much. I'll just pull it off. Maybe just a bit too much. Just take a fibre off. Now tie this in by the tip, just tie it in loosely to begin with. And I just pull it down very carefully as far as I dare without the tip <laughs> slipping through. And I bring the thread. Back up the hook shank. To where I'm going to tie in the front of the thorax, leaving enough room to, to put the hackle. And then carefully bring up the Heron Hurl right up to the front there. Now tie it off so the, the hurl is on the top. So there's the hurl on the top. And I'll bring the wire around in the opposite direction to the way I tied the hurl. I just put three turns in. I don't want to be too close together. And I bring it halfway up the body. And I'll bring this hurl over the top just spread it with my finger and a thumbnail so that it's not a sort of tight bunch and then I tie it off with a wire Just bring the wire down, tie it off with the silk. And then just spin it away. And then I 
bring these back over so the thorax has been doubled and again just spread them with your thumbnail so they're not in a tight bunch and then just tie it off right. like so so you've got this sort of little thorax here at the front and then trim that off now I need a a decent hackle just check the size of the fibers that won't look too bad so there's a, a good Indian hackle usually, usually they're shorter than that and I just pull off this rubbish on the bottom end a softer flue get rid of that Just, you just rest that on top of the thread, on top of the silk, and then just bring the silk round, tie it off. And then just take that butt end off. No, you need to get as many turns as possible out of this hackle. I might manage four playing cards right, so just get the hackle pliers. I turn them with the bright side, the top of the feather towards the eye. And just wind it round in close touching turns. If any of the fibres are moving pulling forward, just pull them back with your fingers. So you don't turn them down. Not oh, too bad. I think that's far enough. If I don't do any more, it's going to pull the hackle out of the pliers, which will be enough to start again. and just cut off the remains the tip just pull any fibres out of the way and tie a, a decent head on North Country patterns you, you don't want a great big head there will be sufficient and then just quick finish one two three will do So you get a nice neat head. And then just cut away the thread and give the head 
caught a very light varnish. You want the varnish to be light enough to soak into the head. You don't want a great sort of gob of varnish on the top. You just want it to soak in. Just a little touch underneath. And there it is. A kite imperial, a representative of a large dark olive. Well, <coughs> not the best, best kites in period we'll see, but I'm sure that'll catch fish on its day. <laughs>